The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are simply that, opinions. All are presumed innocent until proven otherwise in a court of law. Sensitive topics are discussed. Discretion is advised. On this week's Court TV podcast, we head to London for the trial of Johnny Depp versus The Sun, the British tabloid that called Depp a wife beater in an article about the actor's breakup with Amber Heard. Court TV's Grace Wong will join us with all of the shocking details. The trial highlights the differences in libel laws between the U.S. and the U.K., but which country gets it right? Friend of the podcast, Daryl Cohen, will make his case, and I'll explain how even if Johnny Depp wins the case, he loses. This is the Court TV Podcast with Vinny Politan. Welcome to the Court TV Podcast. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for downloading. Great to have you aboard. And you know what's been happening around the country, right? Uh, courtrooms shut down left and right. Jury notices not going out. So as a result, you know, trials have come to a halt. But there right now, believe it or not, is a huge trial taking place. But not here in the United States. Taking place across the pond in London, England. And it's a case involving... Super celeb and actor Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, Mr. Scissorhands, Mr. 21 Jump Street from back in the day. He is suing The Sun, which is a tabloid, um, and its publishers for something that they printed, something that they said about him, that he is a wife beater. Johnny Depp says he's not a wife beater. He says it has damaged his reputation, it has damaged his career, so he is suing The Sun and its publishers for libel over in the UK. And this case has really transformed into something else. It is, it is you know, you'd say, oh, it's a libel case, what, what's the big deal? No, this, was, this is unlike any other libel case because it's about him being a wife beater. That's what the issue is. Is he or is he not a wife beater? So... How do you prove that or disprove that? Well, it's all about his relationship with his ex, Amber Heard. So Court TV and Court TV Live has been following this uh, in depth uh, each and every night. We've been talking about this, and it's interesting. You know, we didn't send Chanley Painter over to London to cover this one, but there is someone who um, is, is sort of in charge, is a big deal at Court TV, right? And, and she's a, a producer, but now she's an executive. I like to call her a suit. Now she's one of the suits at Court TV. And she has been uh, knee-deep in all of this. And, and Grace Wong joins us. Grace, um, great to have you aboard the Court TV podcast today. Thank you for having me, Vinny. Although I there, dispute well, being a suit. I think I'm more of no, a No, once you cross that line, Grace, <laughs> you know, she used to be out, out on the road with me when, when we were uh, young reporters and producers, and, and now she's, you know, crossed that line. You're one of them. You're, you're one of them now, Grace. I don't, I don't agree with that statement. Okay, we will agree I'm to I'm still a worker bee. My hours prove it. Absolutely. She works super hard, and she's still a producer. And this case, Grace, is one that, um, how would you describe this? What, if, if someone's going to ask you, Grace, what this case is all about, what is it really all about? Oh, my goodness. It's, first of all, it's a fascinating case. This is a look really deep inside the relationship of two Hollywood A-listers. These are two superstars in their own right, right? Johnny Depp has been the star of many a movie, uh, very well-reviewed, uh, critics love him. And then Amber Heard, um, who is a, a up-and-coming starlet who has been in some big hits like Aquaman and is also a well-known uh, celebrity and actress. And, you know, these people are like, they're, 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 bigger than life in a sense, right? They're, they're, I think of them as unicorns, just like fascinating, beautiful, rich, and famous, but they're really very human. And this case really shows just how, how fallible and weak they can be. 
because one is accusing the other or they're accusing each other of abuse, which is, um, you know, just a, a very uh, negative allegation. And in this case, the allegations go from name calling and uh, uh, um, uh, verbal abuse to outright violence and criminal violence to some extent. I mean, if this, it sounded to me at times that she was almost testifying in a criminal trial, uh, 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 you know, uh, illustrating and and uh, describing in very in, in detail uh, physical assaults against her by her ex-husband Johnny Depp. Just very detailed. And it's unbelievable the way you describe it them as unicorns because these people are beautiful, they are famous, they are beyond rich, and you would think you've you've got everything set up. Yet they're in a toxic relationship, and at the end of the day, they're miserable. They're absolutely miserable. Okay, let's do this. Um, there, there was this recording of, and I, who made the res, these recordings, by the way, Grace? There's these recordings of conversations between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, where they are, you know, it's like hours of 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 recordings where they're talking through the relationship, and it, it's part of the it's part of the trial now, right, Grace? Yes, it's part of the trial, and many of the recordings were made by Amber, uh, and much of the documentary evidence was made by Amber and her friends because she often during these clashes with Johnny would call on her friends to come and help her. So she felt at some point uh, that she needed to document this either because she felt she wasn't gonna be believed or she wanted, to, she wanted her husband to take accountability, to be accountable for his actions. Because oftentimes when they would get into these fights, there were drug and alcohol fueled arguments and he wouldn't remember what happened. So she, she started documenting these fights so that she could force him to be accountable for what happened. And now these recordings become evidence in the case, but it's evidence that I, I think is, is attempted to be used by both sides here. So let's take a listen now. This is Johnny Depp and Amber Heard in a somewhat private moment, although Amber Heard, I guess, is recording it, talking about some of this violence. No, f no I didn't. What the what are you talking about? And I, I watched you lie, you. and then I, I didn't punch you. And by the I, way, you. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you, babe. You're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, You've been around a long time. I know. Yeah, no, I when you f have a closed you fist. Didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry, I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not f deck you. All right, so in that recording, Grace, that sounds almost like good evidence for Johnny Depp because right there he sounds like he's, he's the victim. He's the victim in all of this. He's not the abuser. He's the abused. Is that possible that, 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 that the judge in this case, not the jury because there's no jury going to be the judge, could think that? Well, there's that that conversation goes on for much longer. We're only hearing a snippet. And during the course of that conversation, there's a lot of back and forth. And there are allegations of him being abusive and not uh, taking responsibility for that abuse. And, um, you know, the judge doesn't have to rely on just their word. I mean, there is documentation. And like I said, there were many arguments in which uh, there were other people that had to intervene. And predictably, we had witnesses on Johnny Depp's side that talked about uh, how he would try to avoid fights and wanted to get out of them. And, um, and then, you know, people on her side, her witnesses, who would basically corroborate the violence and the, the name calling and the, the t very tumultuous relationship and the damage that he caused. I mean, people would come in after a fight and there'd be uh, an apartment that was trashed, um, uh, you know, a painting that, that he had been furious about some painting that she had put up that had come from her ex partner. And uh, he tried to set it on fire. And there's, there's ample documentary evidence of, if not the actual fight itself, uh, but what the aftermath of it. And it's hard to not think that there was some evidence of abuse that occurred in this relationship. 
So let's take a listen. Amber Heard was deposed. So we've gotten uh, video evidence of her talking about the relationship. Uh, let's take a listen to it here because you said other people are, are in the middle of all this. One of the people in the middle of all this, Amber Heard's sister. And in this situation, I guess they're all sort of in the midst of this fight at the top of a staircase. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. She was attempting to break us up. I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did, but I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on the top of a flight of the stairs and she has never hurt anyone in her life and she does not deserve to be pushed down the flight of stairs. And it looked like she was about to be. And I would have done what anybody who has a child or a sister would have done. So this all sounds very dangerous. Gray says, you're li- I mean, fights on the top of staircases, sisters intervening, um, you know, pushing, shoving, whatever's going on here. This relationship was just horrible. But here's the question I have. If, in fact, it's a toxic relationship and there's mutual uh, physicality going back and forth between Amber Heard and Johnny, Je- Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, does that make him a wife beater? If he's in a toxic relationship where he gets into physical altercations with his wife. You know, that's obviously the big question for the judge to decide. And it's the position of the newspaper that published the the article that they only have to prove one incident was reasonably true. And here they have 14 incidents that they are relying on. And these 14 incidents... Uh, Amber Heard has testified to, she has presented pictures of injuries that she suffered as a result of his uh, alleged assaults against her and uh, witnesses who saw, like I said, the aftermath and the injuries and took pictures of her injuries. So he, the judge will have to, to uh, take that all into consideration. And um, on his side, of course, he has presented evidence that she's a habitual liar and has uh, offered as evidence um, an incident where they had taken some dogs to Australia and she had filled out a form in which she uh, was misleading and did not check the box that said she was bringing in or importing animals. And she pled guilty to that incident. So they have presented evidence of her um, uh, l- allegedly lying and uh, making things up and um, basically being inconsistent in some of the details of the attack. It's a mess. It's a mess. But, you know, the world wouldn't have known necessarily all of this, but for this this suit being brought out, which is the amazing part of it. So at the end of the day, um, Johnny Depp is suing and and he's saying that his career is just shot as a result of them calling him a wife beater. And is is there, is there evidence of that that people don't want to hire Johnny Depp anymore be, just because he's a or, or or because of the reason that he's a wife beater or are there other reasons like maybe he's he's difficult to get along with, maybe he's got drug issues or maybe they just don't want to deal with him. I mean is it, is it clear that he's being shut out of Hollywood because of this article and this allegation? Well, the evidence of him having taken a hit in his career uh, came from his uh, ex-paramour, his, his ex-wife, Vanessa Parody, who uh, testified that uh, he, that people are choosing to believe these allegations uh, and uh, he is having problems being cast in certain movies. And The Sun itself had criticized J.K. Rowling for casting uh, um, uh, Johnny Depp, a man of his, char- of his alleged character as a wife beater in a big Harry Potter movie. So uh, that's, th- that's some of the evidence. There hasn't been any direct evidence that he's lost X, X number of roles because of this. So um, th- that's a, a big question. Big question. Right. So, uh, Grace uh, Wong, uh, again, I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming down because you, you know, you're up in the, the, you know, those offices way up on top with the view and the, the wall to ceiling uh, windows and everything. So I appreciate you coming down and doing the podcast with us. Uh, <laughs> great to see you, Grace. Uh, thank you, Vinny. So uh, I'll, I'll, you know, take a look when I come down. I haven't been able to 
tear my eyes away from my computer because I'm usually locked in a story or scripting. So when I see that, uh, th those heights, I'll tell you what it looks like. <laughs> Fantastic. Grace Wong, uh, really uh, the, the part of the foundation of Court TV, folks. And that's, that's an honest assessment. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you so much, Grace Wong. Now, um, interesting, this is taking place in the U.K., you know, and we have a system of justice here in the United States that I actually think is really good, right? And I think we do it better than uh, the rest of the world. But not all Americans think that. And, and in a case like this, the way the law is in the UK is much different than it is in the United States. So when we come back, we're going to bring in uh, my friend Daryl Cohen, who is, is somehow a turncoat and is going to argue on behalf of of Her Royal Majesty uh, versus the, the colonies, uh, the colonists here in the United States. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we return. For more Court TV, watch it on cable, over the air, Roku, or go to CourtTV.com and stream live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage. Catch up on the big moments from our current cases and relive some of Court TV's most historic trials. Court TV, your front row seat to justice. So there's a term in the law. It's called burden of proof. And it's I think it's been the name of a movie. I think it's the name of a, it was the name of Roger Cossacks and Greta Van Susteren's old show uh, on CNN during the O.J. Simpson case, a burden of proof. And it's a term we use all the time at Court TV. But it is so important because all cases, there are two sides, Right. So the two sides come into a courtroom, but one of the sides has to prove their case. And that's the side that has the burden of proof, okay? Now, the criminal cases you watch on court TV, I say it over and over again, so you probably know, but the burden of proof is on the prosecution, is on the state, is on the people, is on the government to prove that case beyond any and all reasonable doubt. They have the burden of proof, right? You make an accusation, the, the, the prosecution is indicting someone. They're making an accusation. So they, they have to back it up by proving it. So in the United States, if, if somebody is um, defamed and they bring a, a libel or defamation lawsuit, they've got to prove that what was said about them was false. Seems fair. You're the one bringing the accusation. So you're bringing the accusation. Bring the evidence. Bring the proof. But over in the UK, they do it differently. If, if you believe that you've been slandered, libeled, defamed, and you bring a lawsuit, then the other side has to prove what they said was true. You see, you see how it's different? Instead of me bringing the lawsuit, having to bring the evidence, it's on the other side who didn't bring the lawsuit who's being accused of something, then they have to prove that it's true what they wrote. And that's the case here in Johnny Depp's libel lawsuit. He's, he's suing the son, the publisher, for libel, but it's the publisher who must prove that Johnny Depp is a wife beater. I don't know. Sounds kind of backwards to me, but who am I? Just an American lawyer. Let me bring in another American lawyer. Daryl Cohen joins us. He's been a prosecutor. Uh, down in Florida, great criminal defense attorney, entertainment law he does as well. He does it all. Uh, Daryl, great to have you aboard. Vinny, it is great to be here. Nice to see you. Nice to be seen. And by the way, there are three sides to every case. One side, two sides, and the one that's in the middle that usually is the right side. Okay. So which side, do you want to go first or second? Because... Um, I believe that our system is better. I believe the Brits have it upside down. They have it backwards. They have it inside out, however you want to say. Uh, would you like to go first, Daryl? Oh, certainly. I'd be more than happy to go first. So let's say that we have to prove we in the British side, and I don't do a British accent very well, but I can try just for a moment, actually. So we have not one, not two, not three. It's hard to even count but 14 different counts that Amber heard Johnny Depp hitting her. She heard it. That may be her last name, but she also heard it. One, two, three, four, 
times three plus two, 14 times. And there were injuries. This wasn't just something that Amber said, this happened and I'm emotional and he's emotional and we made a mistake. She actually testified that what was happening is what happened. Johnny Depp is on the wrong side. He is way beyond his depth. And so he needs to make sure in this case that the sister doesn't get killed. Oh, she didn't because Amber stopped her from being pushed over the stairs. You can't make this stuff up, Vinny. You can't this make it real. up. But here's the problem, Daryl. Here's the problem. Because over in England, right, London, the publisher who is the defendant who has been accused of something has to prove something. They have the burden of proof. I like it our way, okay? You know, I was a prosecutor. You were a prosecutor. We make an accusation. We got to bring the evidence, and we got to bring the proof, right? To me, if you shift that burden now to the accused, and especially when it comes to things like libel and defamation, where we are talking about speech rights, right? Freedom of speech. We've got an amendment. Which one? The first. Number one, baby. Number one here in the United States. And, and the reason why it's number one is because it's so important. It's so important to protect the freedom of expression, the freedom, whether it's the press or the public, whoever, their ability to speak. It's what it's the foundation of our freedom. But in England, because we broke away from them for a reason, folks, in England, they put an onus, a burden on the publisher to try. They, they have to prove what they have written is true, even though they're not the ones bringing the lawsuit. See, I don't understand. Like, you bring a lawsuit, okay, you feel like you've been wronged, prove it. Prove that you've been wronged. But now, in England, you bring the lawsuit, libel, you don't have to prove anything. They've got to prove that what they, they wrote was true. What that does is, that puts a chilling effect on publishers, reporters, journalists, and anyone else who just wants to exercise their freedom to speak, their freedom to report, their freedom to talk. And it could be a big publication like The Sun or a small publication. You get a small publication, they're going to get they're going to be so chilled and so afraid to write or report or say anything that they will be frozen out of the business. And then all of a sudden, we've got less information. And that's the whole point of our libel laws, is to keep the free flow of information going. And in the UK, I guess they're just not as concerned, Daryl, because they put the onus and the burden on the publisher to have to prove the truth of what they are writing when they are not the ones bringing the lawsuit. Vinny, in this instance, it really doesn't matter. The truth is that 14 different counts, one, four, has it done. The publisher, the son, can prove via Amber, who heard it and saw it, and Amber's sister, who saw it, that this is the truth. So in this instance, and I'm not talking about, about the entire system, I am only talking about in this particular instance, they are spot on because Johnny Depp did what they said he did based upon the depositions of nothing else of Amber Heard. That's the way it is. And is it different than the United States? Yes, it is. Is it better? I think it's different. Is it worse? I think it's different. And that's all. And, and yes, we talk about inconsistencies. What's an inconsistency? If you tell the truth, you do not have to remember what you said. It may not come out the same way each and every time, but at the bottom line, at the end, it will be the truth. And the son in this instance, though they have to prove what they published was true, they have proved what is published is true. That's the way it is. Well, that's the son. But let's say, hypothetically, you've got a smaller publication a local publication, a blogger, you know, someone who was out there trying to, to, to make some noise, 
someone who is out there who is attempting to go places perhaps where other journalists aren't going and, and to uncover information, whether it's related to a celebrity or whether it's related to a scientist. To me, it doesn't matter. What matters is creating a system of justice that allows and, and puts a burden on people who are suing other people to prove it and to bring the evidence and to have that burden of proof. Because if a system is bogged down where I can sue someone and then I can just sit back and say, okay, prove it. Think about putting that in, in a criminal context, like the government accusing someone of robbery and then sitting back and say, go ahead, prove, prove to me that you didn't rob the store. You know what I mean? That's the problem. What they're doing is they're saying, listen, hey, I'm accusing you of libel. So now I've got to go into court and prove that I didn't commit libel. To me, that's, that's, that's outrageous. It doesn't work. And, and if it happened in this country, thank goodness it, it hasn't. But there's been talk about trying to change the burden in these cases in this country. If it happened in this country, I mean, the freedom of speech, which is, which is beginning to uh, uh, disappear before our very eyes, in other ways, would, would be gone. People would be chilled from speaking, knowing that I could get sued, and then I've got to get a lawyer, and I've got to prove everything. All right, so Vinny, first of all, lawyers need to make a living, too. And so that's okay. Of lawyers course. Lawyers need to make a living, too. So let me em emphasize that. You talk about bloggers. How many times of all of us, on any side of the pond, seen a blogger, whoever he or she may be, that says something is true when in fact it's not. There has to be a chilling effect on lies. We cannot have false fact. It cannot be. So in this instance, and that's what we're talking about here and only here, not criminal, but civil. Did the son publish the truth? And the truth is that the son has proven that what they have done is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help them, Amber. Daryl, have you ever worn a wig in court? Sorry? Have you ever worn a wig in court? Uh, no. There comment. you go. Well, I I'm glad we have our system, uh, their system. Maybe it'll work in this case, but I don't know if it does. You know, th from the evidence I've heard and, and with the burden of proof the way it is, we'll see what the judge does. But at the end of the day, uh, Daryl Cohen, great attorney, Good friend, thanks so much for being on. Thank you. And by the way, we try to go where no one has been before. Exactly. All right, so when we come back, Johnny Depp, remember, is the claimant or plaintiff in this case. Over in England, they call him claimants. He brought this lawsuit. And, and the purpose of a, a libel lawsuit is there's been damage done to my reputation. And I'm thinking about it. Wow. I mean, that's that's why you bring the case, because you've been unfairly damaged. But what is the damage of this lawsuit to Johnny Depp? I'm going to talk about that when we return. Follow Court TV live over the air, uninterrupted. If you're watching television with an antenna, just rescan your channels now to add Court TV. And go to CourtTV.com to see the exact channel position and more ways to watch Court TV in your area. It appears that he is happy to be painted as somebody who regularly takes drugs. He told the court, almost the very first thing he said was, I was taking every kind of drug known to mankind by the age of 14. So he obviously doesn't care if people know that he's taken lots of drugs. But the thing that really seems to have got under his skin is this accusation that while drunk, he is physically abusive. He utterly and totally denies that. And he says that, He's a Southern gentleman, he was brought up never to hit a woman, he would never lay a finger on anyone, not Amber Heard, not anybody else, and that he cannot live with this description of him. That's one of the reporters who is covering the trial of Johnny Depp, describing himself as someone, you know, who regularly takes drugs. Think about this. Part of, of what has happened as a result of this trial is we've gotten such a crystal clear picture of Johnny Depp, and some people may have known it already. Some may have. But the general public? 
I don't think they knew the depths of Johnny Depp's drug use and his behavior, which was completely exposed during this trial. Now, remember, this is a libel trial. This case was, was it wasn't a case brought by Amber Heard, you know, accusing Johnny Depp of anything. Johnny Depp brought this. Johnny Depp is the claimant. It was his idea that the world should hear all of this information. Okay? Because if, if he doesn't bring the lawsuit, we don't hear all of this. And, and part of what we've heard from Amber Heard through the trial is that she was trying to protect him to a certain extent by not going public, by not talking to police, all the things that you would normally do because she wanted to protect him to a certain extent because I guess she knew what would happen if the world knew what she was alleging. And win or lose this lawsuit, Johnny Depp, at the end of the day, comes out dirtied. I mean, his reputation, and, and I said this, a, a libel case is about your reputation, right? And that's how you determine damages. Have you been seriously damaged, your reputation? I would say, yes, Johnny Depp's reputation has been seriously damaged. But I don't know if it was so much from the sun or if it was from this trial, right? Because in case you missed the article the first time, now you've got this, you know, this month-long uh, drama taking place overseas to remind you. And now all of this evidence is on the Internet forever. And you've got even people like me talking about it. And I'm not a celebrity gossip guy. I don't necessarily, you know, if I'm on a checkout line, I'll read the headlines and then the thing and I'll laugh. But I'm not, you know, knee deep in this stuff. You know, casually knew that Johnny Depp may have been a little bit troubled, but that was just because of the pictures of his teeth that I saw. But now to understand the level of, of trouble and problems that he has had, and everyone else knows, I don't know how this helps his career. How on earth does this help his reputation, help his career, even if he wins? I mean, to me, the only way he wins wins in this case is if the judge finds that the son defamed him, was libelous, and then awards hundreds of millions of dollars in damages, which I don't see coming. That's the only way, because what's revealed here is not going to lead to a restoration of his reputation. You know, the old saying, you know, where do I go to get my reputation back? Well, you don't get it in a trial like this. You get the opposite of that. And I, again, I don't know what the truth is. You know, he may have never hit Amber Heard. She may have abused him from the beginning. And maybe he was just defending himself and he would run away. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter. It's almost as if the truth or the verdict doesn't matter in this case. It's about the evidence that came out and the things that were heard that came from Amber Heard and her sister and others and videos and audios and transcripts, and it all lives forever. So I really don't under, understand the case. And, and if he's not a wife beater, I understand. If you're, if you're not a wife beater and somebody calls you a wife beater, that's not going to sit well with you. But if you know you've got all these other parts of your life that will be exposed and you know how toxic the relationship was and it's going to be exposed, do you really think you were going to get the benefit of the doubt? And again, I don't know the truth. I really don't. But to me, this was literally a lose-lose for Johnny Depp. All right, folks. This case actually took place, right, a trial. Trials will be coming back someday to court TV when those jury notices start going out again. But in the meantime, we are still on every night. I am live from 8 to 11, Monday through Friday, taking you inside the world of crime and justice on television. It's not just a podcast, court TV. Television, that's the full-time thing. We've got a network. And if you've got a digital antenna, please scan it and rescan it so you can pick up our signal. We're also available on streaming services, CourtTV.com, all over the place. But the bottom line, if you've got one of those antennas, you've probably got Court TV, but you've got to rescan the antenna to get us. 
All right, folks, we do this every week. It's the Court TV Podcast. I am Vinny Politan. Thanks so much. Have a great week. And as always, don't forget to hug the kids. This podcast is a production of Court TV. Go to CourtTV.com for more content, trials on demand, and to find out how to watch Court TV in your area.